the book of Amos chapter 6 with the word of wisdom from our Father in Jesus' name, verse 1. Woe to them that are at ease in Zion and trust in the mountain of Samaria, the nation of Samaria, the capital of the northern kingdom of Israel, Zion, Jerusalem being the capital of the southern kingdom of Judah in the historical sense, which is where Satan will appear as the false Christ in Jerusalem at the sixth trumpet, which are named chief of the nations to whom the house of Israel came. Well, there you have it. We're speaking in a futurist prophetic sense as well as historical. Because where did the house of Israel go? Well, they went north over the Caucasus Mountains after being taken into captivity by the Assyrian, a type of Antichrist, and they migrated over to the Americas. And the Christian nations of today contain the lost tribes, so-called. Many are lost to their own identity, their own heritage, thanks to the four hidden dynasties of education, economics, politics, and religion. They're oblivious to their true identity. Not even understanding that there are 12 tribes of Israel. Ten are unaccounted for historically, but nobody thinks to question that for the most part. Some do. Some don't. Most don't. And for that cause, they're going to receive that strong delusion, as Paul wrote of in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. They received not the love of the truth. Why weren't they curious? Why did it never occur to them to seek out the truth? Well, I don't know. That would depend on who you're talking about. Pass ye unto Calna and see, and from thence go ye to Hamath the Great. Then go down to Gath of the Philistines. Be they better than these kingdoms, or their border greater than your border? Ye that put far away the evil day, and cause the seat of violence to come near. People have been talking about the end of the world for as long as I've been alive, I've heard many people say. But we're in that final generation, the generation of the fig tree. And if you understand the parable of the fig tree, then I shouldn't have to explain what this word Hamath is pertaining to in verse 2. But it'll come up again in the last verse of this chapter. They put far away the evil day. It's not going to happen. People have been saying that for hundreds of years. Well, one day they're going to be right. And a hundred years ago, the generation of the fig tree had not began. So, things have changed. Things are different. Do you not see them formulating a one-world system? The Kenites? That lie upon beds of ivory and stretch themselves upon their couches and eat the lambs out of the flock and the calves out of the midst of the stall that chant to the sound of the vial and invent to themselves, not to God, to themselves instruments of music like David. David wrote music to God. This is to themselves, is the difference here. Self-worship is what it's come to. Look around. Do they care about God, or do they care about filling their bellies and their own luxuries? In the mountain of Samaria, which are named chief of the nations, and Zion, to whom the house of Israel came. So looking at it in the futurist prophetic sense, where did the ten tribes go? The Christian nations that drink wine in bowls, this is gallons of wine, and looking forward again to that wine of fornication in the great apostasy, which is what that strong delusion leads one to, ultimately, is spiritual death, dying upon worshiping the false Christ, and anoint themselves with the chief ointments, but they are not grieved for the affliction of Joseph. They don't care. They're selfish. They don't care about anything but themselves. And that's not going to go unpunished. Therefore, now shall they go captive with the first that go captive. A third die spiritually coming out the gate. That's Christianity. I hate to say it, but a third die spiritually, and it's only a third of the population of the earth that are Christians. They're the only ones that can die spiritually. They're the only ones with any eternal life within them to be taken away. And that's what spiritual death is. So understand what's being said here in the futurist sense. 
I keep saying the future is sense because there is a historic element you are to become familiar with as well in order to understand how we got to this point in time. Because the ten tribes were historically taken captive by the Assyrian, and that's how they became the Christian nations, eventually. Therefore now shall they go captive with the first that go captive. They'll think Jesus has returned when Satan shows up because of their ignorance of God's word. They don't have that seal of God in their forehead. Do you? And the banquet of them that stretch themselves shall be removed. God's going to take it away. Babylon will fall at the seventh trumpet. Babylon meaning confusion. And all material, everything is going to be gone. As it's written in Revelation chapter 18, we go into another dimension and the evil rudiments are melted away. The Lord God hath sworn by himself. This is important when God swears by himself. Pay attention. This is important. Saith the Lord, the God of hosts, I abhor the excellency. Translate this arrogance. I abhor the arrogance of Jacob and hate his palaces. God hates pride. That's why Satan fell. And if you want to get in trouble with God, go ahead and get on an ego trip and see what happens to you. You'll be brought down. He who humbles himself shall be exalted, and he who exalts himself shall be humbled, as Christ said in the Gospels. Therefore will I deliver up the city with all that is therein, delivered up to death, death being one of Satan's names. And God's elect will be delivered up to death as well, but for a testimony against them. And who are them? The peoples of the world that have whored after the false Christ, that have become grafted onto the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, became worshipers of death. Unknowingly, for the most part, a lot of them will think it's Jesus. But whose fault is that? Is that the Kenite's fault? Is that Satan's fault? Or is it the person's fault who didn't take the time to study their father's word? So answer that question for yourself. And it shall come to pass, if there remain ten men in one house, that they shall die. And we're speaking spiritually, and the subject being, basically, Christianity and those ten lost tribes, so-called. And a man's uncle, a man's relative, shall take him up, because everybody's dead, a relative had to come and take care of the bodies. And he that burneth him to bring out the bones out of the house, and shall say unto him that is by the sides of the house, is there yet any with thee? And he shall say, No. Then shall he say, Hold thy tongue, for we may not make mention of the name of the Lord. In other words, there's no sense praying for these ten people that have died spiritually, symbolizing, I think, the ten lost tribes, because they're dead. They're going to have to, on their own, come out of the confusion, and that will happen, not entirely, but hopefully more than a few will snap out of it whenever they hear what's said through God's election. I think so. I think those that deliver up God's elect, whenever they see God speaking through the person that they delivered up, will then begin to understand. I hope, hopefully. They'll understand at the seventh trumpet, if nothing else. For behold, the Lord commandeth, and he will smite the great house with breaches and the little house with clefts. Speaking of the two houses, Israel to the north, Judah to the south, in the historical sense, but now we're talking Christian nations, okay? Shall horses run upon the rock? This is said in irony. Can a horse run on a rock? No. Will one plow there with oxen? For ye have turned judgment into gall, and the fruit of righteousness into hemlock. And this is the same word as wormwood. Remember, we covered that in the last chapter. Wormwood, the bitterness, the bitter water, as opposed to the living water. The deception, as opposed to the truth. The mark of the beast in their forehead, as opposed to the seal of God in their forehead. And the seal of God prevents you from being deceived, whereby you go into the millennium with an eternal soul. And you're going into the eternity, definitely, no question if you overcome at the seventh trumpet and are 
first fruits, as the 144,000 are of this world age, the 7,000 very elect being the first fruits of the first world age. And it talks about the fruit of righteousness being turned into wormwood, bitterness. And you'll know a tree by its fruit, okay? So you could say this fruit of righteousness being turned into wormwood happens at the sixth trumpet whenever they receive that mark of the beast in their forehead, which is the deception. They already have it, or they wouldn't receive it. They wouldn't think Satan was Jesus otherwise. But officially, they will receive that mark in their mind and in their right hand. So your fruit is because of your work that you do, whether it be good or evil, and that's when the fruit of righteousness, the righteous acts, turns into bitterness. They start doing the work of the devil, thinking that it's Jesus, and the credit for their righteous acts goes out the window. They're made naked because your righteous acts make up that fine linen that you wear in heaven. Ye which rejoice in a thing of naught, in a thing of nothingness, which say, Have we not taken to us horns by our own strength? And here we have again, arrogance, pride, that'll bring you down real fast like a ton of bricks. But behold, I will raise up against you a nation, O house of Israel, saith the Lord, the God of hosts. And they shall afflict you from the entering in of Hamath, which is the Kenite. Understand the parable of the fig tree from that time that they entered in. Unto the valley of the end of the day, this should read. If you go back to the Hebrew, and Bollinger points this out, it doesn't say the river of the wilderness. It says the valley of the end of the day. So that covers that entire generation, the generation of the fig tree, the last generation. And the Kenites deception through their four hidden dynasties can only afflict you if you're not familiar with your father's word. That's the only way that that can hurt you. And even that locust army that comes at the five-month-long hour of temptation, the locust army being the fallen angels, they can only hurt those who have not the seal of God in their forehead. And Satan can only kill those who have not the seal of God in their forehead. He can only kill those that are ignorant of God's word. So again, whose fault is it if you're afflicted by the Kenite nation and their four hidden dynasties? Well, it's your fault for not understanding your father's word. So get cracking if you're new to this. It's ever so important, and it's no accident that you're listening to this. There's still time. It doesn't take all that long to gain a working knowledge of God's overall plan, whereby you're not deceived. So there you have it, the book of Amos, chapter 6.